Okay, so this is part six of the uh, still rebuild. We're going to be dealing with the oil pump, the suction feed, and the supply side, and we'll see how we get on. I'm just going to zoom in now, and then we'll get on with it. Right. Let's see if we can get this sorted. Right, this is the pickup pipe, and that's the filter. It's quite a coarse filter, but uh, it's been in the tank a long time. So I did actually blow it out backwards with the compressor and through there. The surprising little bits of muck came out. So that's that done. And we know that the pipe's free. It goes in there like that. So this little tag here sits down in that hole. If these rubbers get really hard and brittle, just change them. It's just not worth the grief for uh, continuing with them. So we've just got to pop that. I'm using a broad screwdriver here so we don't stab into that. So as you see, that pops in there reasonably easily. And the oil pump goes like that. So that's the adjustment which is accessed from underneath there. So that's the input which fits in that rubber. That's the output and that goes into a pipe that ends up here. So that's the oil pump. I bought a new feed pipe just because when you start taking these saws apart, they've been together for a long time, these, pick, uh, these feed pipes get very brittle and trying to get them off this barb here is next to impossible without damaging them. So this was like that, so I bought a new one. Just bring to your attention the way that the worm drive goes together. Now then, there's a washer that most people are not aware of and it fits in this recess like that okay and that washer when it's in situ pushes against that shoulder so the worm doesn't rub against the seals of the bearing so it's very easy not to fit that because you're not aware of it the other thing is there's a steel bush now once you put the washer on this steel bush goes on there like that and then the worm sits on top of it okay so it's not rubbing on the seals of the bearing and the steel bush is slightly proud of the worm drive so that when the centrifugal clutch gets threaded on there this thrust face of the centrifugal clutch and then bearing in mind that because this is a left hand thread that as you use the saw this is continually tightening up so that thrust face actually pushes on the steel bush not on the the worm drive so it does mean that when you release uh, when you have the saw ticking over the oil pump will stop rather than being continually driven very important that one as with the early saws uh, they continually pumped whether they were cutting or ticking over so if you left them ticking over on the floor for a minute or so you had a bit of a pool of oil underneath them so there's just one or two bits there that we picked up on that are not immediately uh, obvious that's the word obvious now then this feed pipe I've blown all that lot out so I know there's no muck in there so that pops round there okay now the easiest way of course for this situation and there is a bit of muck in the end of that pipe now got rid of that is to fit that now 
and it's as usual with all chainsaws it's a little bit fiddly but there we go okay imagine trying to do that when the oil pumps bolted in place okay so that goes down on there and that suction is now located in that rubber so then we've got two bolts I'm just looking for the top key so don't wind these one down really tight and then put the other one in it's like with most things engineering and engines and stuff if you've got a case with six bolts in put all six bolts in and wind them down a little bit and then so that the the case or in this case the pump is just pour, pulling in parallel remember that on the back of the pump there's this raised area and that sits in a groove in the ca casing and also in the relieved area provided by that raised area on the bearing so just that's that okay then the washer pop that on then the seal bush then now this is a this has got a new quill drive quill here here's the one that I took out the quills are separate from the the worm drive so they're a replaceable item and I've got a small photo of this but it's really worn on the end so if you have one of these saws and uh, the bar hole is oil hole is clear and you've got oil in the tank but it still doesn't oil then the next thing to do is check this because they do break at the end wear out and uh, they're quickly replaceable and then your pump will be running again because of course that is driven from a notch in the sprocket so as that goes on that locates over there like that and drives so again the oil pump only drives when this is going round so when the chain is uh, is moving okay so that's that chain brake fits like that um, and various other big springs and brand new chain brake band just bring to your attention this little bit of kit here I'll see whether I need a, a, a better photo of this there's a little sort of shoe there and that shoe <coughs> runs against that part there let's see if we can on the chain brake lever so if you've got a chain brake <coughs> lever that although the chain brake works the actual handle here just flops about it's that little spring it's a 10 minute job to change it but it's worth it then you've got a positive action with the chain brake so it does make it a little bit tricky fit in this lot so what we've got to do let's see how we get on with this that goes over that pin and that goes over that pin and then that's located in that notch I'll see if we can see that's located in there so it gives it a positive action so it springs back to center so then now we've got one of those dinky little bits 
that's a little circlet and that little circlet and I've got two or three there just in case of disaster ah there it goes it's on so that wasn't difficult was it does help not having the top handle in place here's the chain brake band that hole there locates in there when we can get it sorted okay so it just fits in that yoke there and then this part and I've cleaned all this lot out just sits in there and it just gets pushed down okay then we got the spring that that piece of rubber there is just to stop it vibrating and chattering that end fits in that hook and you're going how on earth are we going to get that on there so there is as usual a knack as with most things oh look at that there open there we go I've made it look a bit easy there but everything's in place right we should have some little screws somewhere there we go there should be another one there so that's the chain break in place when I edit this if I think there will be a few still photos required I'll bang them in there now if you remember I'm just having a look in the box see if I can find what I'm looking for early on we talked about this bush here and the fact that the, um, the chain catcher fits in there well I was going to offer it up but ah there it is I found it it goes like that so in other words that bush needs to be that part of the bush needs to be facing uppermost a bit like that and it's pushed down in the case and then at some point we'll put a screw in there so short screw goes in there and then just pop that in there making sure that the it fits in the recess in the plastic that's the chain catcher on then there's the cover for the oil feed and the chain adjustment so that just pops on there and there's a single, single screw there slot headed this time that then there's the felling dogs pointing upwards and that one just a short screw in there and the top one is behind
and this one is not threaded it has a nut behind it so we'll do that up in a moment so there we are it's looking more like it so this is the end of part six and part seven we'll be looking at the carburetor see how far we go